Jakobs University in Bremen is a private school for tomorrow's leaders that attracts students from all over the world. Debashish from India wants to be a business executive and is pursuing logistics studies. Yatunda from Nigeria is studying biochemistry and has her sights set on becoming a doctor. Jan is from Germany and a social science student. Right now, his biggest complaint is that the campus gym is much too small. He has an appointment to raise the issue with the school's president. University President Joachim Troisch is a busy man, and Jan has to make his case quickly. The meeting is conducted in English. The present gym was originally promised to be intermediate for the maximum of one year. That is Sometimes messages change if circumstances are the same. The university's budget is limited, and a chunk of it goes to paying grants and scholarships for many of the students. Even so, Jan and his supporters aren't giving up, and the president respects their determination. I that would be brilliant. Sometimes it's frustrating, but I myself have high expectations, including for the students. So on the other hand, I only think it's fair that they react with high expectations of their own. Troisch is standing his ground and says the next gym will probably also only be a temporary solution. But Jan doesn't think the case is closed yet. Through constructive dialogue, usually you, you reach the things. If the dialogue fails, then we have to push more. One of Jakob's university's biggest budget expenses is its laboratories, which cost several million euros. This is where Yotunda has mastered the hands-on component of her biochemistry studies. Yotunda, why did you choose Jakob's university? Oh, uh, mostly because of the lab facilities and the fact that we can actually, were exposed to um, lab research already very early on in the first year. Jakobs University aims to compete with the most renowned institutions of higher learning worldwide. Yotunda thinks the school fulfills the criteria. Well, I'm not going to say we're all amazingly rich and famous, but in, at least in the, in the sense of like the quality of education we're getting, yes. And um, at least in terms of our, our experiences like, and our, our outlook on life, yes. This afternoon, Devashish is taking a break from his studies. He's not the only one. Devashish and his girlfriend Michelle are simply relaxing, but other students are locked in competition in the Intercontinental Football Tournament. Today, it's Europe against America. It's one of the most popular events on campus. Students from 91 countries attend Jacobs University, and the school's international flair is one of its biggest advantages. I don't know. I have it. <laughs> it's more of a continental oh, pride oh, thing, oh, I think, oh. because we're all American. Well, they're all Americans, and uh, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Jakob's like it enforces boundaries and breaks them down at the same time. You know, yeah. you're yeah. so aware that other people aren't from your country that you're kind of a little bit more clicky, but at the same time, you still have way more friends, friends from other nations. Strange. It's it's an interesting <laughs> balance. <laughs> The tournament is over and Jan congratulates the winners. This year the trophy goes to Europe Pink, a team made up of students from Eastern Europe. Meanwhile, President Joachim Troisch has an important meeting. He has to report to the university's governing board. Among the board members is the son of the Coffee Corporation founder, after whom the school is named. The Jacobs Foundation has pledged 200 million euros in funding, but much of it will only be granted once other donors have been found. The first decade, or maybe even the first two decades, are going to be a bit like walking on thin ice. Only later can you be sure your reputation will guarantee that alumni donate money back to the school and win praise around the world. Then things are stable, but until then, it's a struggle. Devashish hopes one day to be among the world's best in the logistics industry. 
His family back in India have pinned their hopes on his future. Devashish is one of the students in the school's new degree program, International Logistics. Companies are already interested in future graduates. We definitely notice that here on campus. We're constantly getting inquiries from companies as to who our students are and what they're learning, and when they'll be finished, and if they can send headhunters. Logistics is always good. Also, I have help from the girls, so that's that's the better. That's allowed. But semester exams are coming up soon, and then Devashish will have to prove his skills without any help. Jan, meanwhile, has spent a month researching freedom of the press in India and Pakistan. Now he's sharing the results with his instructor. They fly in teams from the cities that are controlled, obviously, by the military, kind of embedded journalists. And the media who are there are, face like really high pressures economically, but also in, in what they can report about. But they actually have more information, but they are not coming through on the national media and newspaper. Soon it will be time for Devashish to get down to business. He's invited an executive to visit his logistics group, and it could be an important contact for his future career.